What's up, everybody? This is Austin and Monica, and you're listening to the Profitable Nomad Couple podcast. This is a show for online entrepreneurs, side hustlers, and travel enthusiasts. More people than ever are creating a life of freedom while building cool stuff online and making a ton of money in the process, all while being able to spend more time doing the things that they love. We want this to happen for you as well. So on this show, we're discussing ideas and strategies that will help make that happen. All right, everybody. Welcome to today's special birthday edition of the podcast. Austin is having a birthday this week. And so in order to celebrate, I have asked a lot of you and some family members to submit some questions to Austin. So we're going to be interviewing Austin today based on the questions that have been submitted. Oh, boy. (laughs) All right, let's get into it. Let's, Let's see what questions people have for me. Some of these questions I have already told, I have already asked you so that you had some prep time. A lot of them you have never heard before. Yeah, I'm a little bit nervous because I am not the greatest with like spur of the moment, off the cuff kind of things. So we'll see how it goes. Okay, so we will be, we'll ease you into it. Okay. okay. First question Where have you not been that you want to go? Oh, uh, I have not been to Scotland. And that is very high on my list because I have some Scottish ancestry and I just love the Scottish culture of what I've learned of it. The history of that whole region of the world is really interesting to me. I would also love to go to Greece, similar reasons, minus the Greek heritage. I don't have that, but uh, Greek culture, um, ancient Greece just really fascinates me. And the Mediterranean sounds like a beautiful place. Mm, I love that. While we're in the travel vein, we'll just stay there. Several people wanted to know um, where your favorite vacation spot is. Oh, um, hmm. I think my favorite vacation spots are probably tied to some of my favorite vacations. I don't know if that had to be said. It's probably like a duh. Hawaii is at the top of my list because I've been there a couple times on a couple different family trips and both have been super, super fun. And there's so much to do in Hawaii. I've only been to two of the islands. So there's lots of parts of Hawaii I've never been to, but I would love to go check out the other islands. But I loved Hawaii, went to Oahu and I went to Maui and I loved Puerto Rico. Uh, You and I went there on our honeymoon and it was great. I love Puerto Rico. So island vacation spots is kind of your jam. I guess so. Okay. This one is from your brother Noah. If money was no problem, meaning you had so much of it, what would be the first thing you'd buy? The first thing I would buy. My initial thought was a new wardrobe, probably because you and I were just clothes shopping yesterday. I could probably do with a lot of new clothes. I still have some clothes that I've worn since high school. (laughs) I have a hard time buying new clothes because... I fall in love with the clothes I have, and then I wear them all the time. So I could probably use some some new clothes. (laughs) How very practical of you. (laughs) I know. Um, And then I'm sure the next thing I would buy would be something related to like some software that would make our business operations a little bit easier. Also sounds really lame. Yeah, you're very, (laughs) very practical here. You're not like thinking very big. (laughs) Um. I oh I've always wanted to fly first class. I'm like, well, that's never going to be something I'm going to pay for. But I would get on a plane somewhere. I'd what I'd probably do is one of those flights that you showed me where you don't know where you're going until you're taking off. Basically, um, you buy your tickets, you get to the airport, and like the the gate where it normally says where you're going, it says I don't know, it says like unknown or mystery or whatever. You don't know until you've boarded the plane, you're sitting in your seat, buckled in, you're on, on the runway ready to take off, and they're like, okay, one-way stop, two, and then they let you know where you're going. I would get one of those, but in first class. Yeah, that would be amazing. That'd be super fun. Yeah, it'd be awesome. All right, let's get a little bit deeper here. Do you and your, it says awesome wife here, so I'm just going to plug that. <laughs> Who asked this question? <laughs> Does he and his awesome wife plan on settling down in the future ever and not traveling as much, working out of a home base? Who asked this question? My brother. Ah, <laughs> yeah, I was not going to say that. Oh. I felt cooler <laughs> okay. having a not be a family member saying that I was we awesome. We could just but... cut that part out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the answer to this question depends on who you ask, but I guess you're asking me. 
So my answer would be, I would love to have a home base that we live out of. My ideal scenario would be to have a home somewhere. I don't know exactly where that would be yet, but I would love to own a home and to live out of that home several months out of the year and then be traveling like we are now the other months out of the year. I think it'd be really nice to have a place that we own, that we call our own. We can customize to our liking. We can, I really like the feeling of having a community, like being like living in one spot and having friends and neighbors and stuff that we know super well and are integrated into a community and into the people there, a place to store all of our stuff, (laughs) you know, and then uh, whenever we want to travel and, and take a trip and live somewhere else, we have we would have the means to go and, and kind of nomad around for several months out of the year like we are now. But I would definitely love a home base, personally. Perfect. Along the same lines of future plans, um, Monique asked... Is this you? No. Mo- <laughs> no, no, no. Our listener, Monique, asks, when do you plan to retire and what are you doing today to meet that future? Oh, great question. I do not have like a specific age or a year. I feel like a lot of people do. I've never thought about a specific age or year. I guess my thought was around normal retirement age. But uh, whenever I do retire, I want to make sure that I'm at a place health-wise where I can continue doing something to keep my mind busy, something that I love, something that contributes back to other people, um, and just not have to do it officially, like or not have to do it for income to live off of, but because just because I, I would want something to to fill my time with and to to still find a way to serve other people. What am I doing now to prepare for that time of my life? Well, I am working extremely hard with my awesome wife, Monica, to grow a business. We are we are putting a lot of, of time, a lot of our focus on our life right now is growing a business and building multiple streams of income so that we can sustain ourselves in our older years and not have to work, but work because we choose to. Hannah asks, if you had a whole day with no internet or no devices of any kind, what's your day look like? Ooh, it's probably going to be a hike. We've done a couple of days like that where we just spend the, like we, my mind went first to Goldbug. There's this hot spring in Idaho. It was about three hours from where we were going to college in Rexburg. So we would drive early in the morning, drive three hours to Gold to Goldbug. We would hike for several hours, get to the hot springs to the top of the mountains, spend a couple hours, you know, splish splashing around, having fun, just hanging out with buddies, and then hike back down and drive home and you get back late at night. That would probably be my ideal day without any internet, any electronics, anything like that. Something where I'm just moving my body, I'm out hiking, I'm in the mountains somewhere, I, I'm out in the fresh air, probably jumping in some water, something like that. Your mom asks, what is something that Monica has introduced you to that you would never have thought of on your own, but now you can't imagine not doing? Good question. Um, if you guys haven't seen Halloween Wars on, is it Food Network? Yeah. Oh, that show is so good. And normally I'm not a huge fan of cooking shows. Monica loves like cooking, baking, competition type of shows. I'll sit down and watch them with her every now and again. I was a little bit skeptical about Halloween Wars. I was just going to watch it for a little bit because that's what she likes to watch. And now I look forward to that every October. I freaking love Halloween Wars. And if you don't know what it is, um, there's teams of a cake decorator or a cake designer, a pumpkin carver, and a sugar... A candy maker. Yeah. Sugar polar candy maker person. And the three of them work together to create awesome works of art and uh, compete against each other to, to be the best in the show and it's so much fun it's super entertaining (laughs) i love that that that's your answer to that question um okay and playing instruments has always come really natural to you what is your favorite to play follow-up question if you could suddenly become an expert in one musical instrument which would it be uh my favorite to play is probably the guitar no sorry i was thinking of the follow-up question (laughs) let me me start over okay My favorite to play is the piano, um, be, probably because I've played it the longest. I feel like of all the instruments I play, that's the one I'm best at. I feel like there's a lot of um, versatility in like playing uh, songs on the piano. Um, the bummer is it's not a portable instrument. Any keyboard that is portable is normally not very good. Um, but I like playing that one the most. 
Um, I like learning new songs the most on the piano. Uh, if I could become instantly spectacular and perfect at any one instrument, it would probably be the electric guitar or the harmonica. Uh, electric guitar, because that's probably my favorite instrument to listen to. I've always aspired to being a really good guitarist. I haven't sp- spent like as much time into becoming a good a good guitarist, but I like playing it, and I just love the sound of it, and I love um, the music you can play on it. And the only reason I say harmonica is because that is a very easily transportable instrument. So it'd be fun to have an instrument that I was really good at that I could just put in my pocket and take around the world with me and play wherever. I'd impress people with it, of course. Of course. All right. Michelle asks, who are the main heroes and sheroes of your life journey? Uh, I like this question. I've never heard of a shero before. Me neither, but I really like it. Um, okay. I'm not just saying this because you're in the room with me. You are my biggest shero. Honestly, like my life is so good because Monica's in it. I just attribute so much of where I'm at in life to my relationship with her and her being in my life. And so I just love life with you. Oh, don't look at me like that. <laughs> you're going to make me cry. Well, you're going to make me cry. So it serves you right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I I tell people all the time they need to find themselves a Monica. Sometimes I'm talking about someone who will cook for them. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes I'm talking about someone who's just going to believe in you wholeheartedly. Who's always going to have your back who's going to see the best in you when others don't or when you don't. Uh, And Monica is all those things to me. Thanks, babe. (laughs) Oh, thank you. Thanks for being such a a big part of my life. Well, along those same veins, while we're in the really (laughs) mushy-gushy feelings kind of (laughs) questions, Michelle also wants to know, at what moment did you realize you wanted to marry Monica? Was it What was it like? What went through your mind? Was it a word, thought, or just kind of a wordless note? Oh, this is funny because I wouldn't say it was from the first time I laid eyes on her that I knew I wanted to marry her, but I was 100% interested in getting to know Monica and wanting to have some form of a relationship with her since day one. The moment that I walked in her apartment and into her kitchen in college and we first laid eyes on each other, I'm like, dang, this is someone I want to get to know. At that point, I wouldn't say I was marriage ready, but I think it happened pretty quick. As far as like what it felt like, uh, I think it was more of just a, a knowing, uh, kind of like this general feeling of like, yeah, she's she's the one I want to spend my life with. She's the one who... Um, I feel the best around who makes me the best me, uh, someone I could see living out the rest of my life with. So that feeling just came up, uh, not necessarily gradually, but I don't know how to say it. It just happened, I guess. <laughs> but it was very early on. Yeah. For those people who don't believe in love and first sight, they have never met Austin. Because <laughs> 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 he definitely, uh, definitely fell hard and fast very quickly (laughs) um if you could go back to any age you have been in your life for a day which one would you go back to and why oh i would love to be okay this is probably a controversial i feel like not a lot of people share this desire but i would love to spend another day as a senior in high school i loved my high school experience um and i would want to go back because i feel like i had a great group of friends i was involved in a lot of different activities that i loved Um, I was in ASB leadership. I was in choir. I was in this uh, singing and dancing performance group called PGY. I just, I was having a blast at that stage of my life. And so uh, maybe go back and live another year of senior high school. The glory days. The glory (laughs) days. Okay. I am so sorry if I pronounce your name wrong, but Yelva, Y-L-V-A. Y-L-V-A. I would probably say Ilva. Ilva. I can okay. still apologize for messing it up, though, because I don't know how to actually say it. Okay. I am so sorry if I pronounced your name wrong, but Yilva wants to know, what was the craziest situation you've ever been in while traveling? <sighs> mm. Okay. I feel like I'm actually prepared for this question because people have asked, this th- asked us this question enough. I've prepped an answer. Probably one of the craziest experiences that I've been on while traveling was essentially being r- a- an attempted robbery 
from a Mexican gang in Mexico City. That's a whole story, but they I, we were just taking a day trip from the airport because we had a, like an 18-hour layover in Mexico City. So we left. We thought we'd go explore the city a little bit, come back to the airport. And uh, yeah, there was a group of men on the train who surrounded me, uh, came shoulder to shoulder against me so that I couldn't really move. Uh, one guy was behind me trying to open up my backpack, uh, snag some stuff from it. Someone else on the train called him out, got into a little bit of a yelling match between everybody. Um, I hadn't fully registered what was happening still. And so I wasn't sure why everyone was yelling, backpack, backpack, your backpack. And then, yeah, after that, Monica came and protected me. She wrapped her arm around my backpack and stared down any future assailants. It's a wild yeah, ride. That was a wild ride. Luckily, I mean, the only thing in your backpack for them to steal was like pens and sandwiches, but it was still um, a really intense moment, though, for sure. Um, okay, so we are kind of wrapping up the amount of time we have to record this podcast. So um, I'm going to kind of combine a couple of questions. A lot of people want to know something along the lines of what advice would you give your past self? And what are the like, what do you feel like your life's accomplishments have been up to this moment? So kind of two parting questions here. What are you most proud of? And what advice would you turn around and give yourself? Okay, I do feel like those are pretty different questions. I'll answer the first one first. It's a good order to do it. in. <laughs> <laughs> so what advice would I give my past self? I wish I could go back and tell my younger self not to care so much what other people think. I feel like that is one thing that I personally have struggled with a lot in my life is my how I think other people perceive me. It has drastically affected the things I say, the things I do, the way I operate. Not that I, I don't want to be considerate of what other people think, but I wish I had done things for me a little bit more, just been myself a little bit more, I guess. And not not worried, not so, not spent so much time worrying about how I'm coming across to other people. Because I've learned that realistically, most people aren't thinking about you. You know, most people are thinking about themselves. So a lot of time spent worrying about what people think when that that's not even what they're what's going through their head. And I feel like I would have been just a lot happier and a lot more comfortable a lot sooner in my life, especially through my teenage years. But really basically all my life. Your second question was, what's my like proudest accomplishment? I want to say my relationships with my family. And we've already kind of touched on this. Um, my first family member that I'm most proud of, my, comp- my relationship with is Monica. Monica and I have both, I feel like, put in a lot of work into our relationship and making it really stellar. And I, I feel like that shows and it comes across and I feel that. I am really proud of my relationship with my nieces and my nephews. I've put a lot of work into that, and I try really hard to not just be the fun uncle, although I'm killing it at that, (laughs) but I also try really hard to be a good example to them and just to to be someone that they can look up to and to be someone that they they admire and want to become like. And I hope I'm I'm doing that. I hope I'm coming across that way. But that's what I want to continue doing and making sure that I am that type of person to my to all of my nieces and nephews. There are so many other good questions that people submitted that I really, really, really want to ask you, but I know we are super short on time. So I want to end with this question. What is something that you wish more people knew about you? I'm glad you gave this one to me ahead of time to think about, because when you asked me, I stared at you in the eyes for like 10 minutes and then finally answered, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Um, But I've had some time to think about it. And I think I wish more people knew that when I am having a conversation with you and I talk to you, I am genuinely interested in what you're saying. I feel like I'm not a great people person. I feel like I'm not a super great conversationalist. I'm not a super great small talker. So I worry sometimes that I come across as just like, you know, blank stares or I'll say something that comes across as disingenuous, like, oh, wow, interesting, cool, you know. But sincerely, I am interested and I am I am really impressed with a lot of the things that people tell me and I do want to know more. I just don't feel like that comes across how it feels. I don't know how it's perceived necessarily, which kind of brings us full circle to worrying what other people think about me. But 
Uh, yeah, I just wish anyone listening to this would know that if you're having a conversation with me, even if it doesn't look like it, I'm probably enjoying it and I am curious to know more about you. All right, Austin. Thank you for, for indulging this birthday interview. Happy birthday. I am so grateful to have you in, in my life and I'm grateful to be able to share a little bit about you to all of our listeners. Yeah, thanks for asking these questions and sorry we couldn't get to all of them. Maybe we can jump into the Facebook group and if anyone... If anyone cares enough to ask me more questions, I'll answer them in the Facebook group. <laughs> Perfect. So if any of you guys want to know even more about Austin, um, join us in the Digital Nomad Startup Circle on Facebook. See you guys in there. Oh, hey, you made it to the end of this episode. Thanks for hanging out with us and listening. We hope you are now feeling inspired to go out and design your own life. We would love to get to know you better. So sign up for a free coffee chat with us so we can hang out, talk about your goals and how we can help you get there. All you need to do is head down to the description section of this episode and click on the coffee chat button. All right. Chat soon.